So welcome to episode one of the FIFA 21 Manchester United career mode today. We are starting something special. This is going to be a big series. We're going to rebuild Manchester United and make it great again. Now, early on, I'm just doing my manager customization. You know how it works. Same thing as FIFA 20. I'm just trying to set up the guy, what he looks like, and the clothes he's going to wear to begin with. And uh, we're just going through the initial career mode setup. Now, if you do enjoy the series, make sure you leave a like for me. And if you want to see more of it, make sure you are subscribed because I'm going to be uploading this pretty regularly on the channel. Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the best app to get all the latest football news and live updates. They've got a new and improved app and they want you to try it out. It's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. Now this app is the only football app I've got on my phone because it covers everything. So if you want to try it out for yourself, make sure you use my link in the description. You can download it for free. So of course we have to pick the mighty Manchester United. Not really mighty anymore, but we do have some good talent in the squad to begin with. But going through the settings, we're going to start on Legendary Difficulty. Ultimate will be a little bit scary at the moment, so we'll see what Legendary is. I'm going to turn Competitor Mode off for the time being. Here's a look at the group stages of the Champions League. We've got PSG and Leipzig as well. Not going to be an easy group at all, but I think we can get out of it if we get some good results. But going back to the settings, we've got the uh, Currency, Sterling, we've got the Transfer window enabled, international job offers I'm going to turn off because I don't want to get bombarded with that. Now in terms of negotiation strictness, I'm going with the loose settings. I've played PES with the strict ones and it's very hard to sign players. So I'm going to leave it on loose for this one so I can sign the players that I actually want to get. And not just sign players that you know are from like 4th division teams. And when it comes to the takeover settings, we're going to leave them disabled. But you can put some money in if you really wanted to. I don't think we need to do that for this series. In terms of the preseason, we're just going to pick the first one, South America Continental Cup. We've got teams like Dortmund. Let's take a look at the objectives now for Man United. In the financials, we need to finish the season with a profit margin of 270 million. That is very low priority at the moment. We have a high rating for domestic success. We need to finish in a Champions League spot and reach the FA Cup final. In terms of continental success, which is also high, we need to reach the final of the Champions League. So... Big expectations already. We'll see what we can do. In terms of brand exposure, this is critical. We need to get a streak of 10 games without defeat in home matches this season. And also, within three seasons, sign four of the best players in the world. Overall, 82 and up. So, yeah, that's a big task as well. Youth development is also high. We need to sign at least three players younger than 20 years old with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. So here is a look at the current youth academy. This is what you get when you start the career modes now. So we've got Embalo. We've got... Mendoza, we've got Woitz, we've got Beaven, Cadogan, and Castro. Now, there's a few guys there that could have a 91 and 92 potential, but I'm not counting on it. You know, it's a big range, so it could be even like a 70 or something. So it's nothing too exciting here to begin with. Uh, they've got 50 something overalls, but obviously, it's a youth academy. You know, you have to give them time, and they're incredibly young players. I'm not really the biggest youth academy person, so I don't know if I'm going to use these guys. But we'll see what happens. It's good to have these guys, you know, in the squad ready to go when you start your saves now. But we have to do training as well. With training, you have to do the drills at least once and get a decent score. Because if you don't do them once, you keep getting Ds on all the drills. It's just how it works. So we're just taking a few guys out, doing some of the drills. Uh, you'll see me do some drills, but I think this is a bit boring for you guys to look at. So what I'm trying to do is just get the highest score possible. Maybe Cs, Bs, and As. And that'll definitely help. Much better than getting a D in the drill every time we simulate. So it does affect fitness, it does affect sharpness. I'm still learning how this all works. You know, it's still after a couple, you know, an hour or two, I'm still learning how it works. I still really don't get it much. I don't know which players to use during the training. I think it could be better to use the reserve players, the players that don't play in the matches and rest the people that actually do because when you don't play the players, they lose sharpness and that. So the training would help uh, subsidize that a little bit. But there's different drills you can do, different players go with the drills. And pretty much you have to do them at least once. So that's what I'm trying to do for the guys. So here is a nice little cutscene. We've got Karma number one there. Uh, that is obviously like an unveiling of the manager. So that's pretty cool. But of course, the main attraction here in this episode has to be Jaden Sancho. They can't pull it off in real life. Can we pull it off here? We've got 166 million to spend. Money is no problem. We need to, you know, do this signing. Because it's been so close in real life, we need to, you know, do it in this game. I've got no choice. I have to make it happen. We're ready to offer you 125 million for Sancho, and Dortmund says no, it's not good enough. We need to accept 181 million pounds plus a 10% sell-on clause as well. I've got no choice. I can try and counter it, try and lower the cost of it. So I'm going to propose a new transfer fee here, 
and I'm going to bring it down a couple million. We'll bring it down to about maybe 150, 141, and we'll submit the offer. See if we can get away with this one. And uh, there we go. Mr. Karma says, I'm not trying to cut corners on the deal. Yes, you are, mate. <laughs> we are. And Dorman says, we're sticking to our price. So I've got no choice. I have to accept the deal. They're going to be very strict on that. They're not going to, you know, budge. So we have to accept. And we're going to spend $181 million on Jaden Sancho. We've made it happen in the game. But boy, do I wish there was a request funds feature in the game because we've probably blown the whole budget. So we're in the nice uh, restaurant here trying to get Sancho over, trying to get him to sign a contract here for the club. It's good to have you here at last. Please take a seat. Thanks for meeting us. Maybe we can begin by talking about the role at the club. My client wants to be guaranteed as a starter. So he wants the crucial role. So we'll take that one. We need to. We've got no choice. He wants a five-year deal. So we're going to accept that one as well. Five years is very good. He's only 20 years old as well. So I'm happy with that. And they don't want a release clause. So we're going to accept that as well. That's good for me. And also they want 105000 a week plus some bonuses and goal bonuses as well. So we'll take them. We'll just uh, get him into the club. Why is the manager or the agent wearing the wrong club suit there? What is he doing there? I don't know, man. He should have a Dortmund logo on. But regardless, we got the deal done. We spent $181 million. Not happy that I've blown most of the budget. Look at that. The budget is gone. But we're going to sell some players anyway. And uh, yeah, that's a strong acquisition. You can't go wrong with one of those players. So we've got some player conversations. Galbraith says, I think a loan move will be what I need. And I agree with that. Pereira says the same thing. I did go through the list and put some players on the loan list and stuff. Harry Maguire is having a chat. I just say something positive and uh, we move on with him as well. But I put some players on the loan list, took some players off. I blocked a few offers and stuff. Didn't want to, you know, get offers over and over again for players that I don't want to sell. But we move on to the first match. I'm going to quick sim all these preseason things. Preseason is boring. No one wants to see that kind of stuff. But Sancho did shine on the debut. I think he scored. And uh, yeah, there he is in the interview right there. So yeah, not a bad start for him, you know. So that's good to see. We've got a few guys here like Laird uh, getting offers for loans. There's a few loan to buy offers in there from AI teams as well, which is nice to see. But I'm not really interested in letting players go in the future. I'd rather just send them out on loan and not have to worry about losing them in the future. We drew one all with Leipzig in the second leg or the second game of the uh, group stages of the friendlies. Pereira, Napoli comes in with a loan to buy. I'm not really looking to sell Pereira, so I don't want to have a buy option in there. I just want to send him out on loan. So I propose a removal of the buy clause, and Napoli says, no chance, mate. I'm out of here. There was also interest for Lingard coming from AC Milan, and Lingard is definitely someone that I want to get off the books as well. I don't really see much value in him anymore. He's not really that good of a player anyway in real life, and of course in FIFA, he's got a 77 overall. But, you know, I'd rather get someone else, and he's not worth much as well anymore. So, yeah, that's another thing, but... AC Milan, we're trying to get some money out of him, probably 11 million for Lingard, which is not too bad, but it's not good either, to be honest. But they want to offer 10.1 million. I think I put it up to about 10.5 or 10.2, something like that anyway, uh, trying to get a bit more cash out of him. And let's see what they say. I think they do accept it. Yes, they do. Yep, they're happy with that. So 10,210,000 is enough for Lingard to go. So we've got some more training to take a look at, you know, just going through the drills. Don't really want to put too much training sessions in this series. You guys know that I'm going to be doing it in the background. And also, I'm trying to create like a reserve team sheet because I need to know how many players I can get rid of, you know, before we start running out of backup. So what I like to do is have two teams, one, the main guys, and then, of course, the reserve players. And once I've got a strong reserve team, that is enough for me to say, you know, that's enough signings. But, of course, Igalo is our second striker. I might need to get another striker in here that we actually own, not someone that comes in from loan. And also, maybe another centre-back will be nice, maybe another midfielder as well. I don't know. We just don't have much money, so I might have to go with some youngsters. We'll see how we go with that. Uh, but the first team looks pretty strong, and the reserves are not too bad either. You know, it's not a bad team for a reserve squad. But I have to be careful now. Should I let Pereira go? Should I let other players go? like Mata as well, but I don't want to, you know, sell more players than we actually can afford to sell at the moment as well. Until we get some players in, I think we'll hold down the selling for the moment. But, of course, if you've got any uh, suggestions as well, as we lose in the semi-finals of the friendly, so we are out, we lost 3-1 to Sevilla. If you've got any suggestions for signings, please leave a comment down below. Keep in mind the budget is not good at the moment, it's about 30 million, but let me know which players you want to see and I'll try and make something happen. So you saw the media already attacking Sancho, saying that he fails to impress. So that's not good for Sancho, but we're going to work with him anyway. Here's some more training stuff. 
I'm trying to do different drills, trying to get the best score I can. I want to go through at least all of them once so I don't have to get Ds in the drills. Very important that you guys do this as well. Lingard has been sold, so that is a confirmed deal. He went to AC Milan. And I'm looking at Alex Tellez because in real life they are, you know, looking at him as well. But he costs $40 million at the moment. I don't have that cash. Smalling apparently is still at the club. What is he doing here? Everton this time wants to buy him. So let's see what Ancelotti has to say. Looks like he's got a fresh cut as well. And I think they did agree for about uh, $15 million on Smalling. So Lingard and Smalling have left the club. We've got an offer for a loan deal for Laird. I said that I wanted to remove that buying clause, and they're going to agree with that. So Laird is going to be going to Montpellier, which is not a bad thing for him. And we're going to split the wage 60-40. So his wage is not much anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. So yeah, that guy is gone as well. I also got rid of Marcus Rojo. He went to Galatasaray for about 4 point something million. Pereira, I'm not sure if I want to send him out on loan yet. You know, he's someone that I need as backup in case we lose too many midfielders. But we've got a budget of $30 million after selling a few guys. So there is room to maybe do one or two signings. But they're not going to be like world-class talent probably for that price. But finally, we get to our first match day. I had to like skip two weeks of stuff. Because every day in career mode now, the simulation stops. And because of this early trial with the Fever 21 stuff, I couldn't just sit there for another hour going through each day simulating. So I used the calendar sim. And Pogba did get injured for three months. So we start the season without Pogba for three months. It's the worst thing that could happen at the start of the season. We've got offers for Mata, Phil Jones as well. But like I said, I'm going to stop getting rid of players at the moment until I know which players that I'm going to be bringing in. Otherwise, I'm going to have no depth and we're just going to be, you know, a squad with no players pretty much besides the first 11. So I've got to be careful there as well. But we're going to play Sheffield United in the first game of the season. We've got the usual press conference that comes before that. I say we've been working really hard. And I have to say, the boys have surprised me. You don't really know players until you're with them day to day. A lot of people are talking about your team at the moment. Your supporters expect to see you qualify for the Champions League. I'm going to say that we're good enough to qualify for the Champions League. That is obviously the goal. We should be able to do that with the players we've got. There's another question here. The fans believe losing Smalling is going to be a blow. Mate, the fans don't have to worry. Phil Jones will step up. Uh, <laughs> he's got no choice until we bring in another guy. But Phil Jones will be our backup anyway. Uh, we've got Bailly, we've got Maguire, Lindelof, so he'll probably be in the reserve team until we find someone better. But finally, we reach the start of the Premier League season. We're going to be playing at Old Trafford against Sheffield United. There's the probable lineup. We've got a very strong team as well. Van der Beek starts, Sancho starts as well. Premier League debut for him. And all the guys have some boosted stats as well. So it's pretty good at the moment, looking pretty good. Sheffield United shouldn't be too hard, but you never know. We're playing on legendary difficulty as well. There's Sancho as well. Uh, the headlines are going to be about him making his debut, of course. Everyone wants to see how he's going to go. But I noticed that maybe the lighting is a little bit different in this game. I could be wrong, but I noticed that the lighting in different times of the day in the stadiums and stuff looks a bit different to FIFA 20, but I could be wrong. Here, 10 minutes in, Bruno Fernandes plays it across to Rashford, and we go 1-0 up straight away. We hit him hard straight away. Rashford with the first goal of our campaign. That is what you love to see. And in the 14th minute, Fred intercepts the pass. Fernandez picks it up. Bruno Fernandez plays it up to Martial. 15 minutes in, a couple minutes after the first goal, Martial scores our second. And what a start to the season we're having. Martial shaking the hands there. Social distance, my friend. You shouldn't be doing that. In the 18th minute, three minutes after the second goal goes in, we get another chance here. Martial picks it up and he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he's going to slot it home. Sheffield United collapsed the first half. They just absolutely collapsed. One Bissaka played it up to Sancho. Here Sancho's making a run down the right, looking for options. He's going to cut it back into Fernandez, and Fernandez scores. Bruno Fernandez is going to be a crucial player for us. So we're 4-0 up after 40 minutes, and now Maguire makes the tackle, misses the guy completely, ref calls for the penalty. So 42 minutes in, penalty kick happens. De Gea could have got there with his legs, but it goes in, and it's 4-1 before half time. So a big first half. The second half does quiet down a little bit, but... Of course, there is going to be a few chances. Rashford goes around the keeper, and it does get blocked there. So that was a corner. He didn't miss that by himself. In the, I don't even know what minute that is because Fred's got a yellow card. In the 70th minute, they had a chance there. In the 82nd minute, Shaw gets the ball down the left. He's going to cross it into Martial, who does a spectacular hit. Hits the bar, and they clear it. They get away with it. We play it. Back to Van der Beek. Rashford lays it off to Fernandez, who takes the shot, but it wasn't very strong at all. In the 88th minute, Fernandez picks it up. Does a nice one too with Martial. And Fernandez with the left foot slots one into the back of the net. So Fernandez and Martial having a cracker of a game. And now we're 5-1 up. And that was all she wrote because we won that match 5-1. Martial obviously with two goals. And Fernandez does well as well. So 
what can I say? You know, it was a fantastic start to the season on legendary difficulty as well. Maybe we have to, you know, consider upping the difficulty or putting on competitor mode. We'll, we'll consider that as the games keep coming. But we're going to leave it at that for episode one. Let me know your transfer targets and I'll be sure to do some in the future episodes. Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I want to thank you guys for watching. If you need something else to watch, please make sure you check out this video in the middle. I'll see you next time.